you know, I have five questions that I'm going to address that are very straightforward. Um, I, uh, I guess, uh, like everybody else, I'm very concerned about what's going on with a general sort of global crisis, and particularly a, somebody who lives in America who's now sort of being faced with the some of the worst political conditions we've seen in the last hundred years with horrible President Trump. And uh, but um, I'm not a I'm not a I'm not somebody who's actively sort of physically involved in the, in the, in the dealing with this directly. I, I deal with the work and I deal with my very sort of regional and local conditions to the best of my abilities and, and the, the most and try to humanize them somehow. Um, first question was that you guys sent me with, please, can you explain the details of the process of the artisan workmanship that is happening in your studio in Merida? I, I, let's see, I'll start with, I, I was born in Cuba in 1963, and my parents left in 1969, and we went to Chicago. My parents left because they were uh, part of a very small, lower middle class that existed in Cuba when the revolution came. When the revolution came, they were supporters of the revolution. But by the early 60s, it was clear that uh, the revolution was taking a turn to something that was a lot more totalitarian and, and uh, you know, much more, much more about the geopolitical situation of, you know, the the Cold War and things like that. And my parents are very simple people. They they were looking to just go from being people from the country to moving to the city to you know and developing their lives. So we left. We left without any rank or a lot of the Cuban community that left 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 with a very strange mentality about what it meant to be there and, and or against the revolution in a very deep way. Um, anyway, but about so I grew up in Chicago, and then I went to college in Chicago, and then I uh, I moved to Los Angeles. I had a studio there for many years, um, and then about 15 years ago, I started coming to Mexico, to the Yucatan in particular, and uh, I just found it really interesting to, to to kind of live and or spend time, and actually I was spending a lot of time. I did a project here in the jungle, and uh, and I realized that. Uh, that I was really, there was no reason for me to really live in LA if I didn't want to or live in the first world or live in, in a developed country or whatever. If I didn't want to, I could do both. But what I found most comforting about Mexico is there's a kind of a, there's a simple humanity here that, that, uh, that people live with. And it's, it's, uh, it's not based on just, you know, on pursuit of entrepreneurship or, or the, uh, you know, trickle down economics or any of that stuff. I think people here live in a very simple way. There's poverty here, but somehow the poverty is not really as tragic as, as other places because this is the, an area where you have a, a kind of a, a long, deep history. This is where, this is the center of the Mayan empire in the Yucatan. And, and, and the Mayans are still here and they're every day. They're, they're, they still, they, they have a culture that's, that uh, belongs to them, uh, the Mexican central government has always been somewhat hands off here to some degree. So it's, it's, it's almost a little bit like, a, like Mexico, but not Mexico at the same time. The language is spoken differently. Everything is Spanish as, as a different dialect. And, but going back to the, the question of uh, workmanship, where we make almost everything that we, we exhibit. So the, the kind of culture of making things is something that that I find very important. And I I had a studio in LA that, that's about the same size as the one I have here. And one day I just showed up and said, after coming to Mexico for me, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm moving to Mexico. Whoever wants to come, come. <laughs> Nobody came. <laughs> and uh, I moved anyway. And then for about two, three, first couple of years was uh, me building a new team and, and kind of understanding what was possible here. and. Uh, and there is a lot of there's there's a lot of artisans here, a lot of carpenters and painters and welders and 
people do a lot of really beautiful things. And then what I try to do is I tried to kind of bring the culture from the north that maybe and they started to bring technology down here. So I started to sort of train people how to kind of work with their hands in the way that they used to, but at the same time work digitally. And 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 I was hopeful that we would sort of find some way to to optimize both. And that's sort of what we do in the studio. Um, you know, we have uh, every we have architects, but we also have carpenters, and carpenters are are are, uh, are very very good, and they've gotten much much better. And they use CNC machines now. They use lasers. They, we use uh, all kinds of different digital technologies to keep track of the things we make and, uh, and, and so for me it's been very interesting to be in, in move to Mexico I think the quality of my life has gotten better the uh, the people that I work with are really great um, I generally I, I try the, the the economic culture here for for working people is not great so one of the things that I try to do is I, I pay people more here where I work where they work than they normally would would get Anywhere else, we, we, we do really kind of basic things, not anything heroic or anything like that, but we, we basically make sure everybody has, can go to the doctor, everybody can save some money, everybody can, can have transportation, and makes a good living wage based on the, you know, a lot of the people who, who work with me have their own houses and blah, 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 and, and I'm not responsible for that they are. So I just try to be a fair person and be very sort of, you know, appreciative of the fact that um, I have a good group of people that work with me. So, um, you know, you can ask me questions if you want. I'm horrible at these things unless people ask me questions. So our second question was kind of just, if you could please tell us about one of them, your artworks that you think is witness to your involvement in the environment and how, and how that was for you. Huh. I mean, uh, I did a project here in the Yucatan, which is one of the reasons it brought me down here, which was a, a hacienda. And it's, a, it's about seven or 10 kilometers inside the jungle, and there's absolutely nothing there. So what I wanted to do was, was to kind of make a, a very strange and estranged optical experience in a place where you normally wouldn't have one. And uh, this place is, is very sort of ornamental. And, it's, it has like these crazy lamps. It's in this, we did, we did the, uh, we did about nine acres of, of, uh, of, of landscaping. It, it has very eccentric uh, processes. It has a really, really complicated tile work. It has a, you know, uh, so basically, and, and what I guess what's probably most interesting about that project is that the project is, it's not really a, a, a it, it has, it has no program really. It's just taking like a like a like a building, a place, a history, or the history of haciendas, and trying to turn it into a kind of a, a ridiculous kind of ornamental object that isn't there. I mean, you can stay there, but you don't. It's you don't. You know, not many people do, and blah blah blah. But it's a it's it's basically trying to understand what what the limits of. Uh, contextual sighting is and, and the lack thereof. So, you know, um, and I, I mean, that's probably the most extreme project I've done in relationship to like this woods that, that are out in the middle of nowhere and let's sort of try to, and we, you know, these places, this, this place is, or, uh, this place is actually connected to a very old community. It's, it's uh, Isamon. We had a lot of, we had a lot, a lot of uh, artisans and a lot of the people that were that worked on it for about five years actually took about a lot of times I'll, I'll start with with natural origins you know like for instance uh, with this group of lamps that you're looking here I start I was looking at jellyfish and underwater things and because the ocean the uh, the uh, Caribbean and the, and the Gulf of Mexico is very close and I was also using a lot a lot of uh, I was looking at it and trying to sort of recompile recombine like uh, you know the like Different fruit and the like, the, the interior fruit, the underground. I was and I was trying to sort of put together like the water and and the earth in a way because uh, I was thinking about the 
like the, the Mayan cosmology is interesting because um, the uh, they there aren't any rivers in the Yucatan, for instance. It's it's very strange. It's a, the, and I, a lot of and what's what's sort of known and projected as that possibility of that is that is because of the uh, the meteor that hit that basically shut down the world for 13 years and killed the dinosaurs hit right there, literally it hit like you know right next to where I live and blah 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 and it and it, sh it, sh it basically the meteor made it so that you know there was no sunlight on the earth in the earth for 13 years everything that uh, everything that needed to to heat um that you know that was living from photosynthesis pretty much died so the only, the only animals the only things that kind of survived were things underground things and things like that so anyway so the mayans have an interest in cosmology because they're, they're, they're their, the origin of life for them is not as to like a lot of times, you know, societies will say, well, the origin of the river is the origin of life, and blah, blah, blah. that's very traditional. But the Mayans have this, have a relationship to the underground because there's a lot of water underground, and then the, the, the water in the clouds. And it's that connection is what uh, is where they, where they define like how life began. And, uh, it's also a place where there's a lot of water in the summer and then there's a drought in the winter. So it's the water's very, very, very important to the Mayan cosmological culture. And uh, in fact, in one of the reasons Mayans understood the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the cosmologies and stars and stars is because they have these things called cenotes, which are these big water holes. And, and they basically function like telescopes. So the, the sky would reflect on these large open open cenotes, which are like these kind of naturally forming lakes. And you could measure in these, these areas, these, these holes of water that are like somewhere about 100, 200 uh, feet in diameter. And, and you, you, they started to measure like what, what, the, what, what was happening in the sky. And from that, you know, and the regularity. That's also a lot of early, a lot of the early telescopes, and they're actually just the ponds. And that was the, that was the way people actually understood what was happening up in the sky with the stars and the planets and so on and so forth. So, um, so then, but going back to the lamp, I mean, what, what I was thinking about the lamps is like, I want to take something that's forms that are, that are, that are, that are underwater and forms that are, that are, that are in trees and then some, there's some, some birds and things. Things like that, so I wanted to sort of like. I was thinking about how how I could sort of participate in that in a kind of an eccentric in that type of mythology in an eccentric way and produce these things that would never necessarily kind of explicitly say these things, but at least for my working process, it was it's an interesting kind of index to operate from. Um, so. Jorge, I just saw um two questions in the chat. Um, if that's okay, if I can ask one of them. Um, someone was just asking. If in light of the hyper use of research in today's society, how do you think the art space should directly accommodate sustainability with its choices and use of materials? I think it should stay regional, number one. Everything we did there was, was uh, all the, you know, everything was made within a hundred mile radius. Um, there was no, uh, you know, there was, there was, the only materials that we, we, we used were definitely, they're Mexican made, and they're, but in general, like the, uh, Everything from the cinder block that was locally made to the, you know, the, the, the tile was made by a local ceramic company that's been around for a long time, and uh, and uh, you know, tried to use tried to use everything. I tried to use the the, the the building and construction vernacular of the place as much as humanly possible, and I would say, you know, 95, 99 percent of everything that's there was was made from the, the kind of methodology that exists to make other things there. So I wasn't importing, the only thing I was, I've, I've ever imported down here is, is just that, like technology a bit. So I think that's kind of how you do it. I don't know. I mean, I, I think that uh, I, I was, I mean, uh, I was trying to make something very, very beautiful, very local. And uh, understanding different processes so, in that region, you know. So, 
Great, thank you. Um, I'm just seeing another question just come in right now. Um, saying you were born in Cuba, lived in Chicago, and now are currently in Mexico. How have Mexico and the other places you visited or lived in informed and changed your works? Well, dramatically. I mean, I think you have to live a different life here. I mean, it's like, I mean, I think you know, living in LA was living in LA. It was, it was you know, I, I got to LA in the '80s when it was a really open, beautifully disheveled place, and uh, by the time I left, it uh, you know, the uh, the uh, it wasn't. It was basically on its way to being a West Coast New York, you know, and, which I was never very interested in. But I like New York, right? but I, LA I, I never quite liked a lot. I mean, I didn't dislike it, but I, I, I always thought LA was a, was a was a kind of a suburban lifestyle where people lived in their homes and they didn't really go out into the community and they didn't they didn't there wasn't there's was no public space in, in LA and I never never fully liked that. I mean, I, luckily I was traveled so much. Last 25 or 30 years, that I was always a lot in a lot of other places. I wasn't just kind of bound there. But uh, there's some advantages to LA. So LA is a very beautiful place and, uh, at the same time. But um, I, I like cities, I like places where people live on the street and stuff like that. You know, Merida is where I live now, is, is, a, is a small city, not even that small, it's about a million people, but it has a very sort of old center. And it's, uh, you know, it, it has, for instance, the very first. Cathedral in all of the Americas. It was started maybe ten or twenty years after Columbus landed, and it's in the center of the square. I mean, you know, I liked, I liked the. And also, I speak Spanish, so I really like speaking Spanish here. You know, and I like the. It's hard to explain, but there's a kind of a. There's a there's a comfortable Latinness here that I really enjoy, and people are very polite and. The, the, Culture of the daily culture here is very sweet. I mean, it's a, it's, it has the lowest crime rate of, any, of anywhere in Mexico, possibly in, in, in North America. It's a very strange, beautiful old, old city. With I, I wanna, I, it's, sometimes it feels like it's still stuck in the 70s or something. So, Jason is asking, how do you imagine making exhibitions now? Is it a different language? Um, I think. You know, I think it's always, a, it's like, how, how do you wrangle the problems of one exhibition into the next? And I think that, like, like, for instance, an interesting question that I always have is, is like, you know, how, like a project like the, ones, the one we saw, what, how do I extract problems of exhibitions from, of exhibitions from a place like that? that is so dispersed in terms of what it is and what it isn't and where it is and it's got so many problems and it's got, you know what I mean? I tend to think about, again, an exhibition as an optic, an optic for, for a set of problems that I don't necessarily even want, you know, can or want to manage. I want to put things in play, generally. And uh, so I think now is, I mean, the exhibitions are, are, are different. I mean, I think, there's, I, I think the fact that we're doing this and, and with, with, with this technology at this time and the fact that, you know, we're, we're, all, we're all sort of so interconnected, I think the possibility of what an exhibition is is, is even more open than it was. Um, I don't, uh, I, I've always sort of done exhibitions in galleries. I've always done like, you know, uh, public projects. I've always done projects for myself. I've always done projects for that are commissions from collectors or, or municipalities and things like that. So everyone at every at every turn, it's always a little bit different. I don't know if I answered your question, Jason, but maybe 